Hey everybody, it's Tyler Helene here at Sovereign Hope, and uh, we're going to put out a series of interviews and resources for us as we're trying to navigate not only what it looks like to be a Christian in a world where we are not able to gather and do life as we normally have, but also what does it look like to do a bunch of things, and that includes teaching your kids and family worship. We have kids who, as we'll talk about today, who are no longer learning from teachers at school, but they're learning from untrained professionals like me. And what does that look like for us? What does it look like for discipleship? What does it look like for a gamut of things? And so uh, the cool thing about the church is God puts people in our midst to have skill sets in different places. And while we can't gather for encouragement right now, we can share resources. And so I have uh, with me today, Jackie Harper and Charity Schomer, and I'm going to let them just give an introduction of themselves when they came to Sovereign Hope, what their background is. And today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to give hope to people like me who are now uh, teachers of children responsible for young minds. Um, and so they're going to help us with this discussion. So first let's uh, meet Jackie and then we'll have Charity go next. Yeah. So I'm Jackie Harper. I've been at Sovereign Hope for about a year and a half. Um, formerly I taught at Lewis and Clark. I taught third and fourth grade. Um, so I love elementary school teaching. I'm currently a stay at home mom. So I'm here to help if you need anything. Thanks Jackie. Hi, I'm Charity Schomer. I've been at Sovereign Hope Church for 15 years. And I am currently um, a elementary teacher at Valley Christian School here in Missoula, um, where I absolutely love teaching um, all age groups. Well, we're so happy to have you guys with us. Uh, my first question is it has to do with the, we'll, we'll talk about emotions, we'll talk about specific challenges, but now all of a sudden my home has gotten turned into a school. Uh, I have one of my four kids who's in school. He's a first grader. And so my life's even easier than a lot of people. But what does it actually look like um, to make this my home into a place where learning can happen? Uh, what do we, how do I to think about schedules and things like that in my home? Well, I think one of the most important things to begin with is setting up a schedule and a routine specific to your family. Um, every family is different, every work schedule is different. So what you have to figure out is how many kids am I going to have to be teaching? What's my day look like? What's my work schedule look like? And just go from there going, I need to establish a routine that will work for all members of my family and then stick to that routine as best as possible because the kids will thrive on routine. And is it okay, Jackie, if I've got um, different kids and different nap schedules, is it, is it encouraged for me to think specifically about my kid if I'm home and say, well, this is when I know Owen is most uh, protected to sit down and do something like this. And I know for Adley, it's going to look different maybe in the afternoon after a nap or something like that. Yeah, you definitely have to figure out what works for your family and your schedule. Some parents are working from home and having to coordinate that time. And so you'd really just have to set a time that works for your, your family, a schedule that's I think some sort of schedule is good for everybody involved, but also keeping it flexible um, when things come up or, you know, days are just different. Um, emotions are different in different days. So I just think try to set a goal every week um, and then each day maybe break that goal into tangible accomplishments that they can they can reach that day, um, but also keep it flexible. You don't want to have it extra stressful. So I know there are going to be some parents who, uh, some parents and some kids who are going to want to take, you know, a, a six hour school day and cram it into 45 minutes. And then there are going to be people who want to take a six hour school day and spread it out over 12 hours. Um, what's the wisdom in grouping uh, intentional time periods for this versus spreading it out longer to where it's more closer to a school day? Or is that something that's just dependent upon family to family and kid to kid? I really believe that um, every family is going to have to make the decision based off of their own, you know, work routine schedules and home life. But I do truly believe as, as a teacher that the kids are, are more ready to go in the morning. Uh, they're more alert. Their brains are, are fresh in the morning and they could probably get um, the majority of their work done um, better in the morning. So as much as, um, you know, they might say, no, I'll do that later. It's like, honestly, it, it might really, I'd encourage parents to look at the morning hours of the day as being, um, for the most part, um, the better uh, learning hours of the day. I'm an easy case in one sense where I only have one child who's affected by schools being closed. 
but we know in our church and our community, there are people who have first graders, fourth graders, fifth graders, all at home and all at different levels. Uh, what does it look like and what advice do you have for a parent who not only has multiple kids, but multiple kids at different learning capacities? Um, do I have to now learn everything um, or be capable of helping everybody or what tips do you have with that? I grew up in a family like that. So I know one of the ways that my mom went about um, keeping her sanity was having us all structure our days um, like subject by subject. Uh, and together, you know, try and do it as much as a family as possible. Um, you might have a first grader, a third grader, and a fifth grader all having different math to do. But if you do math at the same time, it's almost like um, the older kids can help the younger kids, or you you might you know more on the same page um, when it comes to you know your reading and writing time. Perhaps the little kids can read to the older siblings while mom makes lunch. I mean, really incorporate that family time as much as possible. And so having older kids who need to be growing and reading and then having other kids who maybe be read to at a specific point in their school day to link those up and see those as working hand in glove. Uh, one thing that's unique during this time, and I'll address this again to you, Charity, because I know you've had parents talking about this, is parents are still working and still everywhere and kids are at home and their whole schedule got turned around. And so there are some families where screen time is being introduced at a drastic level just as a babysitter, and which, which is unique in this time period. And then there are parents who haven't had much screen time where now they're having to learn online. Um, how should parents think about screen time with their kids and uh, in a respectful and moderate way? I believe that they can go about using screen time as a beneficial thing. Um, I believe in moderation. Um, and that screen time can obviously be used educationally. Um, I've actually communicated with many parents of my students and told them try to limit screen time to educational things. Um, there's there's lots of websites. There's there's an overwhelming amount of of, of places to go. Um, but there's definitely some some core websites and some core um, you know apps you can use to help your kids with their math facts or their spelling words. Um, it's, it's really cool that we have this technology for a time like this. Um, and instead of putting them in front of, you know, Disney Channel, you know, or, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants, I mean, they could really be sitting and, and learning. And that would really help um, give mom and dad time to catch up on other things because they can use technology for, you know, learning, for practicing um, on their own independently, which would really um, benefit the parents. So working that into your schedule and thinking in advance with it and strategically um, sounds like a good way to not die as a parent, um, but also be productive and wise stewards of our kids and the resources that God gave us. Um, Jackie, this is something you've mentioned to me, uh, which was encouraging for me as a dad who's now uh, a teacher in the midst of this. Uh, Talk to me as a parent, how do I view myself in this? Am I, do I see myself primarily as a parent? Do I see myself as a teacher? Because even in the, the two days I've been doing this in working on math sheets with my son, I'm like, am I addressing this problem as a parent or am I addressing this problem as a teacher? Um, parents just need to remember that they aren't a teacher. They're not trained to be a teacher and that's okay. And your student or your child is going to probably say, well, my teacher does it this way or, that's not how so-and-so taught me. So you just have to alleviate that, that pressure right off the bat and tell your child, I'm gonna do it differently and that's okay. We all learn differently, we all teach differently, but take off that pressure. You aren't their teacher and that's okay. You have your parent first, your mom or dad, you have a responsibility to teach your child in this time, but you're not gonna make or break your child's academic career in two months. It's just not possible. Um, with that said, I think you should still make an attempt, but it shouldn't cause your family added stress. Your relationship with your child is way more important than their grade. That's ultimately my opinion about that. I think um, there's resources out there that can help you, equip you, but don't go and spend a bunch of money on math manipulatives or new curriculum and all that for two months. Uh, just do work with what you have. You'd be surprised how many things you already have in your house that will support learning and make it fun. I've actually just handed over budgeting to my son for both math and dual purpose while he's uh, home as my slave. Um, and that's one thing, we'll, we'll talk about some resources uh, when we get near to the end of this session. Uh, but one thing that is unique to remember as a parent is 
teachers are still teachers during this time. And Charity, you are still um, employed at Valley and you're there to help parents with this. Uh, what kind of advice are you giving parents as they're emailing you and as they're uh, calling or texting you in finding a balance between parent and teacher? I might be doing things different than their teacher was doing things. Yeah, even before all this happened, in a normal school week, I'd have lots of, um, you know, parents tell me that during homework time, no, Ms. Schomber told me to do it this way, and you're telling me to do it this way, and that's wrong. And and I've had that happen even before this whole, you know, homeschool thing. And um, yeah, so what my what my advice would be in that is just to remember that it all comes down to just think, you know, about it biblically. You're the parent. What is the child's role to you as the parent is to honor and obey. And we've been put in a situation where, yeah, the parent isn't technically, might not be trained as a real teacher, but they've been put in a situation where they they have to be the teacher right now. And that's okay if they don't teach the way, you know, Mrs. So-and-so does it. And the child's job is to listen and obey and, and honor their parents in this. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, I think that's really what it comes down to um, is because, you know, even if the, the parents don't um, teach regularly, you know, and this might be uncomfortable for them having to play teacher, um, they're still the parent, they're still the authority, and the child still has the responsibility to honor and obey. Yeah, I think one thing that that is really helpful about what you said is even when um, I'm working with my children or disciplining my children, uh, I and they're wrestling to get through a situation, like even if it's to eat food, I always have to remind them that um, God has put mommy and daddy in charge of them. And that doesn't mean mom and dad are gonna make perfect decisions. Um, only God makes perfect decisions. Only God is your perfect parent. Um, but it does mean that he has entrusted you to us right now. And I am certainly, I'm openly not a perfect parent. I'm very openly not a perfect first grade teacher. Um, and yet talking about them that that their teachers have entrusted us as their parents, not only to love them and care for them as we normally do, but to actually uh, help their teachers do this in a time period. And so communicating to them in a way where it's actually preparing them to follow God better and understanding that God has entrusted authorities um, in their life. And those authorities will have to answer to God someday. Um, and God is perfect in all that he does. Um, but we need to be mindful of where God has called us, even inside the church, if you look at Hebrews, um, to, to be uh, in submission to those who are in authority uh, over us, even in the context of the church. So it's a great way to have that discussion of what does authority look like, even when it's led by imperfect teachers or imperfect men as pastors or imperfect parents um, in that, and knowing that that uh, each person is responsible to God for how they respond um, to those who are either under their authority or over them in authority. So I think that's really helpful for parents. It's a relief to me to know that I'm not going to break my kid and that I'm not expected to all of a sudden have the years of education that you guys have had in teaching kids all of a sudden come, there's no YouTube video. I looked how to become an expert teacher overnight doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> but we have been entrusted by our schools and by God to, to train and raise our kids. And in this time, it looks like academically as well. So knowing I'm responsible to make progress in helping the education of my kids, what should I be emphasizing? What should my responsibility look like when it comes to helping them advance academically during this time period? What are some helpful things I should be looking for, some helpful patterns I should be establishing to make sure that I'm doing my responsibility to a level where I can trust God with the rest? Um, just keeping up with where your ch children is, children are at, whether it's reading, math, wherever they're at, don't let them fall behind. I think that's really critical. Um, so we talked about flashcards or different drills that you can do with your child. Read with your children. Um, just keep learning fun. That's the whole emphasis um, in my classroom was always learning is fun. It doesn't have to be a stressful time. Read the room. If you, if you notice tension, if you're starting to get angry or your child's starting to get angry, take a break. Go outside, do some jumping jacks. Um, you can... I had a former uh, parent contact me and she said, we're going to go do fractions on the with sidewalk chalk today. I mean, that's a small way to just make learning a little different than a worksheet. So be creative. Mm -hmm. Have the child come up with ideas, too, is another option. 
Um, but just don't make it stressful. Because if it's stressful, the learning's not gonna happen anyway, and it's just gonna cause tension in your family. When I'm a parent, I'm given a worksheet, I'm given a task from a teacher. How much of that do I say, my kid needs to uh, complete this task before he moves on or understand in school, they'd be only working on this for 20 minutes, half an hour, and then they'd move on regardless of where he stopped. How am I, um, how do I manage whether I'm striving for perfection or whether I'm managing, do we have concentrated time on this skill and now I can move on? Yeah, usually for an assignment, it really depends on what the teacher's expectation is. Is it, is it an assessment? Is it just practice? Um, if it's a practice scenario and they're mastered 10 problems and they're checked out by that 10th problem, but they have 100% so far, I see that as completion and they're good to go. Um, if they want to do more and they want to get more practice, great, have them finish it. Uh, worksheets, for example, or homework assignments should never take more than 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the grade level and what the context is. But I think that, again, read the room. If the child seems burned out, don't push it. And if hopefully your teacher is flexible with that, communicate with your teacher. Uh, child's teacher say, you know, my child had no problem finishing these 10 without any help. Um, is it all right if this can be seen as complete? So it really yeah. is, don't forget you have a resource, you're the te child's teacher hopefully will give you good communication, uh, ways to communicate with them. Um, but yeah, do not, I don't see them having to, or do even problems. I've also offered odd problems, whatever they wanna do, um, just to make it, you want them to feel like they can obtain a goal and complete a goal. And if they just feel like they see a hundred problems, they're, they're going to be overwhelmed and they're going to shut down. So find out it, it varies from kid to kid, but just figure out what works for you guys and don't push your child too hard. Charity, you had talked earlier, you'd shared an email with me and one of the primary skills you um, encourage, especially in the younger years is to make sure kids don't fall behind on reading. Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like, why that's important to make sure that that's still woven into um, my responsibility of creating time for my child to have that uh, ability to hone that skill? Yeah, reading is something that you guys could be able to incorporate into your day in multiple ways. Um, uh, you definitely want your children to keep up on their reading skills, no matter the level. And that looks different at all different, um, you know, grades and age levels. Um, when you're looking at it as like a school at home family environment, um, you can have um, each child read the family devotions in the morning, taking turns. You can have um, the older children um, read stuff to the younger children or have the younger children practice their reading to the older children. Um, definitely want to incorporate some sort of a fun way to keep reading going. I know that a lot of schools out there have been participating in the Book It uh, contest with Pizza Hut, and um, there's a few other ones out there too um, for the Silverwood tickets and such. And those are just to encourage kids to keep reading, but that really what that means for the parents is learning to log the minutes and, and teach the kids to um, spend that time, you know, and, and be disciplined into uh, make, making sure that they are reading consistently. Um, it is so important because we, you know, over summer, even coming back in the fall for the next year, you know, a lot of kiddos will have taken a lot of time off um, of a lot of those skills, including reading. And I think that, um, well, reading has just so many benefits. It's not just keeping up the skill to be able to, you know, keep moving up in in school next year, but it's it's learning comprehension. It's learning, you know, life skills. It's it's you could incorporate it into, um, you know, any subject, um, any any family activity. Um, I know it's probably overwhelming, but there's all sorts of resources for parents out there for how to incorporate reading um, into schedules uh, for the kiddos. You know, have uh, you know the reading logs, have them do book reports, have them, um, you know, act out a story or a summary. So there's so many ways you can incorporate that. But yes, reading is just um, a very um, fun, fundamental uh, foundational thing that kids should uh, continue with no matter what other schooling they're doing at home. I think that's a really uh, helpful thing, especially when it comes to us being Christians. I mean, Christians are creatures of the word. Like God, God has chosen in his providence to record his speaking to us uh, in letters and in symbols and in language. And uh, even we've had the, with, with Owen being home during this time, uh, Part of the responsibility I have is, is I have this unique thing with, with Owen in the house. And so I stay home 
uh, a little later than I would normally go to work and we do devotions together, just he and I. And one of the things that I'm doing is, so he's in a first grade. He, he's a pretty good reader for being in first grade. I give props to his kindergarten teacher for that. Um, Charity was Owen's kindergarten teacher. And uh, so we just do a devotion on the amount he's comfortable to read. Like I actually, I know reading an actual Bible, we're not doing a kid's storybook Bible, which those are great and you should use those. But we're actually reading um, from the ESV and I just do a devotion based off what he is capable of reading and tracking. And then we go back and ask questions. And so in that we're, I'm teaching him a spiritual discipline and I'm calling him to do the act of studying the Bible, but I'm also doing it at a level where I know he can do it and not become frustrated. If I'm forcing Owen to read an entire chapter and then trying to do devotions on it, I failed as a dad, I failed as a pastor and I failed as a teacher because it's just going to lead to frustration for all of us. Um, And one thing that's unique and I want to ask you charity is we are home with our kids now more than we would be. And we have more interaction with them. What are some ways you're mindful of when you're teaching your kids of moments where you could work the gospel in outside of just doing a Bible study or things like that? Like how do you actually bring the Bible to bear on your teaching? I have the amazing opportunity to be able to, you know, speak the word of God and speak truth into these kids all day long because I work in a Christian school environment. And it's amazing how every facet of teaching, I mean, every every outlet, you can, you can throw scripture and you can throw the gospel message into anything. We're doing a math lesson and it's like, wow, guys, don't you see how amazing God is. He's a God of order and he's made things orderly, Um, you know, and, and just how are numbers used so that we can even keep track of our own scriptures when we're memorizing, you know, that's such a, such an amazing thing in science. It's the same thing. It's like, you know, the God, the creator of the universe, you know, look what he's done for us. And this is just a taste of what, you know, we'll see someday in eternity. You know, you could talk about, you know, with history and social studies and, and language arts and stuff. There's so many ways to incorporate the gospel academically and it it's exciting for me to think you know that we have this opportunity with our kids to do that with their general academics and um and then there's other than academics there's behavior there's many times during the day when i can incorporate the gospel into speaking um truth to my kids about behavior if if i have to sit a kid in from recess and have a chat with them about this behavior or you know disrespect um it's it's so cool because we can go straight to scriptures. You know, well, what does God say about this? What is what is your role in this? What has God told you to do in this situation? He says to honor and obey or respect, you know, and, you know, you need to ask forgiveness. You need to put others before yourself. There's so many different ways. I, I work with five and six year olds for the most part, you know, and so even in little tiny ways, I can I can say, you know, God is it. God wants you to be more Christ like God wants you to handle this, you know, and and. Yeah, and just grow in this. And so we, I would always end in prayer with them and say, you know, let, let's pray. Let's ask God to forgive you for this. Let's ask God to help grow you in this. Let's ask God to give you the wisdom you need. Um, and those are just little tiny samples of ways I'm able to, you know, incorporate that into my day. There's a whole bunch more. But it's, it's, it's exciting that now parents have this opportunity to incorporate that biblical perspective into academics. And I think that's so important because our, our motto at Sovereign Hope is gospel change for all of life. And we expect um, for uh, all areas of our adult lives to just be processes of not only growth, but it's growth that's connected to sanctification. Um, like that God needs to change our hearts in this. And we need to remember that even when we're teaching our kids that their growth in academics is not disconnected from their growth in following Jesus. And there's even been times where me with Owen where um, – with with math or with the schedules we're trying to implement where i kind of tuck away this needs to be dealt with with him but it's not from the angle of an academic angle it's more from like as a father i'm seeing how my son's heart is responding and i know long term whether he knows how to borrow in, in subtraction which is something we've talked to jackie about or not that'll get worked out but his response to that um communicates actually his posture towards the lord and being able to compartmentalize those and deal with those as separate issues so that they're they're understood as um, this isn't just, it's, it's okay to be disheartened on something that's hard. It's hard. That's what school's meant to do. But what do we do when we're disheartened? And how does the gospel help us process through this in a way that's respectful and still it takes into account all of our emotions? So I'll, I'll throw out a question to you guys, as you guys have had that um, in the education world, how am I as a parent to deal with a kid who's easily disheartened when it comes to uh, struggling with reading, struggling with math, struggling with this new schedule. What are ways that you guys have learned um, 
both as educators and as Christians, to give hope and encouragement to people who are wrestling in this? Um, celebrate small accomplishments, I think is important. Um, st stop, uh, just kids need encouragement and they get discouraged really easily. They get anxious very easily. That's a very common thing. Um, so you as a parent have a responsibility to um, guide them through that. You know, we were anxious, anxiety is a sin. How can we um, pray? Do we need to stop and pray through this um, challenge? Do we need to just take a break? Do what you need a hug? Like all these things, like simple things can go a long way. Um, and you can read your child so well. Um, just It's just not worth pushing it, but it's a teaching opportunity for you, a spiritual teaching opportunity to be able to help present, you know, you can be an example to them. Share a time when you were struggling with something and how you overcame that. Um, and just uh, take breaks. Um, I don't think that teachers are expecting parents to have kids work from for six hours in a day. I, I know that's a school day, but it's also broken into lunch, recess, specials, you know, and kindergarten they do play, you know, which is educational and just it doesn't look like learning all day long in a school setting. So keep that in mind when you're designing your schedule that figure out what they need to accomplish, set a goal and break it up, get outside as much as you can, um, try to come up with creative ways uh, to make it different so they're not just doing book work all day long. Um, but through those challenges, just stop and don't keep pushing, don't let it turn into a big argument, stop, assess, and try to share the gospel to them. Be uh, transparent too. I, I was always a teacher who tried to be transparent and used examples from my learning when I was a child or whatever, just to help them relate and see like, it's not them. It's common to have frustrations mm -hmm. and anxieties, but it's how, like Tyler said, how you cope with them, how you deal and work through them. That's the most important thing. I, I agree with you completely, Jackie. And I, mm -hmm. I do believe too, and I hope, you know, parents will understand that there, there's so much room for grace through this because they are trying to figure this out right now. And we don't know how long this is gonna be for. Um, but you can't, you don't have to have all the answers today. I know I've personally spent the last 48 hours racking my brain on how to teach online and parents here at the same time and homeschool. And, you know, it's like, there's, there's grace to be given on all, on all accounts. And, um, I really do think that you're right too, that it's like, um, a full school day looks so much different than, than the home day. PE can be playing outside mm -hmm. in the backyard. Um, you know, music specials incorporate stuff incorporate some art time incorporate music lessons abby has to practice piano or something you know um so that it's not just all book work you know even if and this is because i deal with little kids but even if you have you know a silly game like this you know like one of these little fishy games we you know with the fishing pole you could take anything you have to use as a manipulative you know and have the bigger kids spend time using stuff with the little kids put a number on the bottom of each fish and as they kept pick them up they have to Count by twos or, or name their even numbers or you know you could think of ways to incorporate learning into fun playtime too especially since you probably have kids of multiple ages at home and and you have ones that you know need more attention than others you guys have uh there, there's all sorts of resources that are out there and i'm going to figure out a way uh if, if you guys are watching this on facebook we might be able to put links and charity has provided some uh sample schedules that you could take and you could um, put that for your day so your kids can actually see and observe uh, what works for your family and what expectations are uh, in there. And I love some of the ones you said even include as part of it, like uh, kids are helping make lunch or helping clean up after lunch or things like that, that we could be unique to uh, kind of, you know, take advantage of the slave labor that God has put back into your home <laughs> and uh, have them do things for free. Uh, but, but Jackie, you had a couple resources, one being a specific website, another one being a, a gracious offer from you. So why don't you share those with us right now in closing? I would just warn or caution uh, parents to go and Google things because you will become overwhelmed very fast. And there's a lot of rich and great resources out there, but there's also a lot of bad resources that can overwhelm your child, confuse your child. And so I would be careful just with Googling. I would ask your teacher first for resources specifically, maybe what they've done in class. I'm sure there's some technology that they've incorporated in some way, 
one of which, if they don't, I use the program called freckle.com and it actually has math, ELA, science and social studies and it does a pretest for the child and so it then adjusts the program to where your child is at and creates a fun uh, learning environment. I wouldn't say that would be replacing every day, get, just put them on a uh, freckle, but I think as maybe it could be something they could do once a week or maybe you know 15 minutes a day just to break it up and give you a break and also allow them to have some fun learning in a different way. Um, so if they get a problem wrong, it usually has a video that teaches them. They can earn points and then they can buy things in the little store. Um, so it's it's interactive, but it's also educational. Um, and, and it just is a great resource just to have. And right now, I think up until June, they're offering, um, it's already free, but they're offering some additional things that normally cost an additional price. I think they're, they're waiving those fees up until June. So definitely look into that and see if that's something that would work for your child. And then Jackie, you've offered to, um, for, we've offered something that is normally premium to all of our members if they pay a specific amount more a month, you get free access to Jackie for tailor-made uh, advice for your kids. But you're actually offering um, right now, uh, you could email Jackie, J-A-C-K-I-E at solvehope.com. Um, and if you have specific questions, like I know we've already taken advantage of you in helping um, teach uh, subtraction, long form subtraction to, to my son. Um, but what kind of questions are you willing to help parents wrestle through through this time? I'm a stay-at-home mom to a two-year-old, and so I have a lot of free time during the day. I mean, you know, within reason, but I love teaching. I miss teaching, so this is an opportunity for me, selfishly, to get to use what I love and my passion um, to be able to help people. And so I guess I've already had some of my former parents um, reach out to me, but I'm willing to help find those resources, extra activities that kind of change the, if your teacher's just, or your child just has worksheets or book work and they're just getting bored with it, coming up with other things that you can do and how you can take it outside or how you can make it a little more fun or so you don't also go and spend hundreds of dollars on things you're gonna use for two months and then you know, give them away. So there are a lot of things, like Charity said, you can, you're, you would be surprised what you can turn into uh, a math manipulative. So um, I'm just wanting to be a resource to help you come up with those ideas, help, lead you in uh, good resources versus the bad. Um, I can send short videos if you know you just don't understand how the Common Core math if you're in the Missoula School uh, District, how, why is this so complicated? I'm happy to um, share you know my perspective and, and basically what your child is probably more familiar with. Um, if it's like, that's not how my teacher said, well, I might be able to make bridge that gap. So feel free to email um, and I will do my best to try to help alleviate some of the anxiety or stress that you may have in this time. Awesome. So that again is Jackie, J-A-C-K-I-E at sovhope, S-O-V-H-O-P-E dot com. Uh, well, thank you ladies so much for your time. Uh, thanks for the ways in which uh, you have and are caring for kids and uh, what, what an amazing witness of the body of Christ and the skills and gifts we have um, to help each other follow Jesus in all of life through the gospel. Um, so thank you so much, and uh, I hope you guys have a good day.